I've tried out a bunch of different commenting plugins for Vim like Nerd Commenter and a bunch of others like that which I'll talk about in just a moment but the one that I finally settled on was Vim Commentary or Commentary.Vim, however you want to actually name it. Now, if you don't know, a commenting plugin is basically a plugin that makes it easier to do commenting across all the different sorts of files. So, obviously you can manually write out the comments in Vim if you really want to, but wouldn't it be easier if you just have a consistent binding across all your files? So say if you're in a Vim file, you want to add a comment, you can just press this binding and it'll add a quotation mark. Or if you're in a C file, it'll add a slash slash or a slash asterisk asterisk slash. Things like this. So it's a way to make it so you can easily comment and also uncomment without really needing to think about a bunch of different bindings. So we'll just talk about Nerd Commenter for just a moment. So the reason why I don't use Nerd Commenter, you can probably guess it now if you've seen any of my other Vim videos. Nerd Commenter has a bunch of features and that's really cool. But the problem is that I genuinely don't care about most of the features in here. So there's really no reason for me to run something like Nerd Commenter. Now, I know I could probably set it up so I can get rid of most of the bindings, but wouldn't it make more sense to just use something that doesn't have all of this functionality to begin with and just use something that does exactly what I want it to do? So if you use Nerd Commenter, I'm not saying it's bad, it's probably really good. But I've switched over to Vim Commentary. So this is why I said the naming's weird. So it's called Vim Commentary on the GitHub and the actual name is commentary.vim. So basically the way this works is it has pretty much like three, four bindings, four bindings. And all of them make perfect sense if you're used to using Vim. But before we get to the functionality, if you want to install it, that's pretty easy. I'm using Vim plug, so pretty much all I have to do is go over to my nvim file or my uh, vimrc if I'm using my vimrc, if I'm using regular vim. And in my vim plug block, what I'm gonna do is just add this line in here. So plug, and then in um, apostrophes, write tpope slash vim commentary. I actually have a couple of other tpope plugins as well, because tpope actually makes a lot of vim plugins. So go check out his GitHub if you want to see just some of the random stuff he's done. You probably recognize vim fugitive and a couple of others that he's done before as well. Anyway, back to this plugin. So there's a couple of bindings here. We have gcc, gc, gcap, and also there's a command for, uh, I think it's called command mode, but I will just show you how that basically works. Let's say we wanted to do something like comment out this line and also the two lines following it. There's a couple of different ways we could do this. So with GCC, the way we would do this is go three. So that's the count of the lines we actually want to comment and go GCC. And that'll basically comment out this line and the two consecutive lines. The other way we could do this, one thing I should mention before we get to that is that you can actually do all of the bindings in reverse as well. So if we do the exact same thing, that'll basically just uncomment stuff. You can also do this with GC. So we could go GC and then go to J. So that'll basically do comment the current line and then do a motion for 2J and 2J is to go two down. So that'll work the exact same way as well. So uh, GC, 2J and that'll uncomment. And the other way we can do that is by just doing a highlight and doing it in visual mode. And this is the way that I typically work with stuff because this is just the most sensible way to work for me just because I'm still used to working with VS Code. Even though I've been using Vim for months, I still have some habits from when I was actually using VS Code. So this is the way that I typically do it. So we just highlight it, press GC, and that works as you'd expect. And you can also highlight that again, GC, and it does what you'd expect as well. Now there's another binding I don't typically use, and that is GCAP. So GCAP will basically say comment out the paragraph. So GCAP, comment out the paragraph. Or we can do that on the other paragraph down here. So GCAP, works as you'd expect. GCAP again, and we'll actually uncomment it. Now you might also be wondering why I've got this bit down the bottom here. And the reason I have that there is because there's another binding in here as well. And that is this command right here. So you can basically do a search and actually run commentaries. Let's say we wanted to do a global invocation and search for something like hello and comment out the line that says hello. Now, actually, if we put this on another line, what you'll see is basically it's going to comment out both of these lines. Basically, if we go into command mode, we write G and then we search for hello. And then we type another slash and we write in commentary. As we see, that'll then comment out every single line that says hello in it. And as you saw in here, the example it gives is with to do. So you could have, say, a bunch of to do's throughout a file, to do here, to do here, another to do down here. And then basically all you'd have to do 
is go into that command, write in to do, uh, put a slash in there obviously, commentary, and then it'll just comment out every single line that has to do in it. Now, I don't normally use that binding, but that actually is a really cool feature that has as well. Now, you don't just have to use it with global. As we see in here, you can also do it with a number of lines. So let's say we wanted to do something like comment out from lines one to line six. Basically, the way we could do this is go into command mode. So type colon one to six, and then write commentary. And as you can see, works as you'd expect. So we can uncomment that with GCAP. As you can see, it doesn't matter which binding you use at the start. If something is commented, then any of the bindings will work to get rid of the comments. This may have come off as pretty obvious when I mentioned it uses motions, but with GC, you actually can do up from the current position as well. So you don't have to go down. So you could do something like GC 2K, and then that will comment from this line and then go to upwards. There isn't a way to do the same thing with GCC though. So you can't do something like minus two and then go GCC. That's not really a thing you can do. GCC only works going downwards. It would be nice to see something where you could do that. You'd have to have a separate binding for it. So say something like a capital G or something like that, because I don't think there's a way to do negative numbers in Vim. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe there's actually a way to do negative numbers in commands. So in that case, it would require a separate binding. But as I mentioned, if you ever need a comment from your current position going upwards, you can always just use GC. Now I've been showing you this from just a random blank file, but I did mention that it makes commenting easier across various sort of files. So it doesn't just do this one sort of comment string. It actually will use other ones. Let's go to like vimrc or something and check that out. So if we wanted to comment something in here, let's say we want to comment out this uh, set clipboard command. All we'd have to do is run add highlight that GC, or we could go GC, do it on the current line, or we could do my binding, which is a little bit different. So I don't ever actually write GC. So I've actually got it bound to control slash in my terminal. Now, the reason for this is because generally, as I was saying before, all I do is I'll highlight a block and just go control slash and that'll comment it out. Or I can just uncomment it again by just highlighting again, going control slash. Now, obviously the GC bindings are still there if I ever want to use them, but typically I don't have any reason to. So it, it feels a bit easier for me just to use what I was used to using when I was using VS Code. Now I didn't mention this earlier, but there is one slight problem with this plugin. It's kind of inherent to the way that a lot of these plugins work. If we do something like GC and go 2J, as you can see, because this section here was already commented and the line you're starting on wasn't commented, it adds a second layer of commenting to that comment. So if you start from something that's uncommented, everything that you do from that point is going to be turning on a comment. If you start from the other side, it's going to be getting rid of a comment. So just keep that in mind that it isn't going to work flawlessly all of the time. There will be some weird behavior from time to time. One thing I didn't mention earlier is there's actually a dedicated binding to do uncommenting and that's GCGC. Now what this is gonna do is uncomment a set of adjacent commented lines. Now, what exactly does that mean? So if we just go over to my test file again, basically if we were to say comment out this entire block, as we can see, we have a bunch of adjacent lines here. So if we do GCGC, it'll uncomment all of them or we could have a subset of this. So we could comment out those and we can go GCGC. Or we could also do something like this, where we only have a single line break between this stuff. So comment that out, put the cursor here, we go GC, GC, it'll uncomment those. Now, I don't believe it works if there's two line breaks. I haven't actually tried that. Let's test it out. GC, GC. Nope, it actually does work. So I think it just ignores new line characters and we'll just treat these as two contained blocks, which might mean that it will have some weird behavior from time to time. But if you have some sort of text that isn't commented between this, so say like this, and we try to run GC, GC from here, it's only gonna do one of them. And for some reason it decided to do the one at the top. I don't know why it did the one at the top. I think it's probably just because it reads the file from the top down. That's probably why it went in that direction. Now, I think the only thing you might be curious about is how I set up my key binding in my terminal. So this will obviously depend on which terminal you're using. If you're using ST, there isn't a way to actually do it by default, but if you're using something like Alacrity like I am, it's actually really easy to do. So if we just go over to my Alacrity configs and put that in full screen mode, and if we just go down to the section where I have all my key bindings, 
as we can see, pretty much what I'm doing in here is on the key slash with the modifier control, I'm just printing out the char's GC. And luckily, when you print out char's in a terminal, it's basically treated as the same way as you actually pressing the keys. So if you print out GC, to Vim, all it thinks is that you've just pressed the GC characters, which means it's gonna work exactly the same as just pressing GC, which I think is really cool and is one of the things I really love about using a terminal. And the last thing I should probably mention is the fact that if your file isn't supported, there is a way to actually fix that. So if we look in here, basically all you have to do is run an auto command on a file type and then set the local comment string. So basically all this is gonna do is set the sort of commenting string used by Vim commentary. So if for example, you're using an Apache file, then you need a commenting string that looks something like this, or if you're using something like, I don't know, if for whatever reason Vim just wasn't supported, then you would set up the Vim string in a very similar way. It seems pretty straightforward to have it working. I haven't actually run into a file type where it's not working, but there probably is one out there that doesn't really work properly for, but for me, as I said, haven't really run into that problem, so I'm not really gonna worry about it. Now, as you can probably tell, I really like this plugin. I've been using it for, I don't even know, maybe a couple months now. It replaced Node Commenter once I did my, not my last video on Vim. I think my, it might've been my last big video on Vim where I was talking about all of my plugins. I think that's when I decided to replace Node Commenter, and I am entirely happy with the replacement that I got. I don't think I'm gonna find a better commenting plugin for my use case than this, but maybe Node Commenter is something more like what you want. And in that case, feel free to use Node Commenter, but I'm gonna stick with what I like. So I think that's pretty much everything for this. But before I end the video, I wanna thank my patrons. So I wanna thank Nathan, Andrew, Road, Oki, Larry, Ray, and Zilver, who helped make this channel possible. Without their support, I wouldn't be doing this as well today. If you wanna support the channel on Patreon, there'll be a link to my Patreon and all that down below as well as some other links if you want to monetarily support the channel as well, like my Amazon affiliate links, where you can buy the gear that I use on this channel, as well as just whatever it is you want to buy on Amazon. So I've also got my alternate video platforms and my social links, so be sure to check all of those links out down below as well. Also, my podcast is down there as always, so go check out the podcast. I think we're getting close to 10 episodes. I think we're on episode 9 or 8 or something at this point. So go subscribe to the podcast. I think it's getting way better than it was in the past, but it's obviously still a mess. I still think it's fun though, and you might enjoy it. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.